So our motorhome, we haven't used it for nearly four months throughout the winter. Um, basically we had a lot going on in our lives so we just didn't get the opportunity to come down, check her out and start her up. However, uh, when we did finally get down to uh, seeing how she is and making sure everything's okay, uh, we found that we have a flat battery, uh, the, uh, basically the vehicle battery, not the leisure battery. Now, although we do have a solar panel on the top of our motorhome, uh, the controller is automatically set to charge the, um, the vehicle battery as a preference. So throughout the winter, um, had we have had a nice winter or sun, hopefully that would have charged it, but we didn't, so it didn't. Um, now, a very common problem, and it is hugely common, I mean, all you've got to do is search some of their forums, um, is that if you have a flat battery, um, on a motorhome over the winter um, then that can flag up an airbag issue which is exactly what happened to us um, I basically tried to start it it was about 12 the battery was about 12.2 12.3 volts not enough to turn the engine and it flagged up an airbag issue now some people say that you can disconnect the battery for um, if you've got the airbag issue you can disconnect the battery for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and that should clear it and may clear it it doesn't it didn't with us um, the only option you get is to get the airbag module which we'll show you in a second sent away for reprogramming and the, the um, data cleared so um, what I had to do was basically to jump start the uh, motorhome or I actually use the power pack the simplest way to do that is if you open the bonnet you have uh, if I can get Michelle just to have a look down here uh, just under there this is a Fiat Ducato uh, if you lift this panel here you've got a connection there which is your live or your positive and you have a connection here which is your negative so you connect your negative to that the positive to that and that will save you basically having to um, pull out the whole of the front of the cab the flooring and um, take get to the battery that's the simplest way to charge it so we got it started and uh, we took it to our uh, dealer who looks after our motorhome uh, as Ellis uh, caravans who are quite local to us uh, we took it to them I mean you can drive it with the airbag with the airbag warning going off it drives you bonkers because it keeps flashing up uh, airbag check owner's manual um, and if you look into the owner's manual uh, it just basically says go to an authorized dealer so um, you can drive it with the airbag but it's not really recommended because if you had an issue um, you don't want you know you know you don't want a problem with an airbag so we did take it it was only uh, 10 minutes down the road from where we are at the moment um, and we got a new battery put on our battery is about five years old on here so we had a, a, a brand new battery put on also it has to be said that if you do have the flashing airbag warning light on uh, that is an MOT failure just so you know now the tools you're going to need for this job um, is going to be a flat screwdriver that's to get the uh, the panel or uh, the battery panel off uh, you possibly going to need a Phillips screwdriver uh, you're possibly going to need a pair of pliers or you're possibly going to need a Torx key in our case we need a Torx key um, we'll show you what this is for but this is a T25 uh, you also will 100% need to use have a 10 mil socket um, don't worry about a spanner it's awkward to do it with a spanner if you've got a 10 mil socket it's just so much easier after removing the carpet from the cab area you'll have this panel here which covers the battery this is what you use your fin uh, your flat screwdriver for is just undo those there's uh, six of them um, and that will then and then lift this up and that will show you the battery um, then you do have to remove this piece which sits under the cup holders so we'll show you that in a second um, now as I said you have two screws in here one in either side now they can either be Phillips or they can be um, Torx or they can be the pin type where you just use the pliers to pull out the pin or use a T25 Torx as in our case okay so the battery here uh, it's very very simple on ours we've got a quick release 
uh, on the negative side so I've just released that um, and I've tucked that away so it doesn't go anywhere near the terminal. The actual airbag module is situated or located just here I've taken ours out there are three 10 mil nuts which we'll show you in a second so two on this side and then one on the back I'll just come down a little bit now what I would suggest is if you undo those three nuts take it out just remove it and then you've got these two clips here now these clips they have a push on one side which you just push and then you can then push these back and as you push these back uh, they will unclip don't try to force them they will just you just push the push the uh, plastic on the top it will release them and then you just push these and these will pop out right once you've got the uh, airbag module out you then need to um, I mean we've used a company called Crash Data I know many forums talk about Crash Data only in positive ways so we've used Crash Data if you go to crashdata.com we'll put a link in the description below um, the first thing you do is do a search for your model number which is this top line here it's in ours it says fear and then some numbers you can do a search on their website for that and it will come up with this item click on the box and click buy now um, put all your details in and then as soon as you pay you pay by credit card it's 84 pounds including return postage and VAT um, if you go to a main dealer they are quoting between seven eight seven hundred and nine hundred pounds to replace this so crash data is a great uh, easy easy route out um, once you once you purchase it you'll get an email back with uh, what to do where to send it we sent ours uh, signed for next day and uh, we sent it out on a Monday uh, they got it at 10 past 10 on the Tuesday uh, the, in the afternoon about half past three I had an email from them saying that the unit has been done and it's being returned to us with a, cra a tracking number uh, and we got it a day and uh, two days later on the Thursday so the service is impeccable absolutely 100% couldn't recommend them highly enough now once you've taken out the uh, airbag module ECU um, this is where it gets a bit controversial because some people say you can connect the battery back up other people say whatever you do don't connect the battery up um, we they've both got faults and they, they've both got pros and cons if you connect the battery up then um, whatever you do whatever you do do not let the key go anywhere near the ignition because if you put the ignition on it will flag up Z lots and lots of faults because the main uh, cab the main vehicle ECU electronic control unit will then realize there's an issue here with the airbag and it will just flag up so many problems so I didn't um, we've actually um, left our battery disconnected um, now the problem if you leave it disconnected are two reasons there are two problems you're going to have one is the uh, alarm is not going to work and two the central locking is not going to work so I'd rather have those issues um, because we are in secure storage and um, I've managed to uh, secure the passenger's door because the driver's door and the habitation door on our vehicle which is a Fiat Ducato um, you can actually lock with the key so you can lock the the doors manually however the passenger door you can't so all we did is when we took our airbag module off uh, and left the battery disconnected is I literally just put um, the seat belt around the door just to keep the door uh, closed and no one can get in okay so we're going to just put the module back in you've got two cables um, all they do is hopefully you can see I can get my hands around is just push them in and literally just pull that lever across that locks it pulls it into place and locks it and then the same with the blue cable I'm so sorry you won't be able to see this the cable goes in push it in and just pull it back just make sure they're tight which they are and then line up the holes which are like that 
and that's the modulin. And then with the 10 mil nuts, they're gonna go on here and on here and on this back one here. I'm just gonna put those on, screw them in. Okay, so I've just put the negative back on and locked it in and I'll just put these panels in um, and then we'll check to see if it's okay. Right, so we've got the battery connected, we've got the uh, airbag control unit in there, all connected. Uh, managed to put the panel back. It was a little bit awkward, if I'm honest, this bottom panel. Uh, just awkward trying to get the screw in, but finally did it. Uh, and then we've got the cover back on here. So all I'm gonna do now is just put the carpet back in and then we shall give it a go, test it. Right, so we've got the everything in, uh, let's give it a go. Uh, as I said, we did get the warning light saying passenger airbag, so let's hope that that's gone away. It is very cold at the moment uh, today, so we may get a minus. And the airbag's gone on, it's telling us we've got ice on the road, but the airbag has actually gone off. How wonderful, and we had one here as well, uh, which has also gone off. Happy days, 84 pounds, probably, an hour out of my life or our lives and um, great great highly recommend crash data we'll put a link in the description we hope you found us useful um, any problems or any anything you want to ask us please give us a uh, just drop us a line and it just leaves me to say on behalf of both Michelle who's behind the camera today thank you very much um, and myself thank you so much for watching bye bye now <laughs>